For weeks now, we have been telling you about PIX11's efforts to expose and then remedy a racially motivated injustice against Jack Johnson, America's first black heavyweight boxing champion. This week, we flew to Chicago to put a face to a name. How hey, you doing? Hey, I'm doing fine. It's glad to finally You're all meet you. The way here from New York. We're That's here. Wonderful. The face of Linda E. Haywood, a Windy City descendant of Jack Johnson his great, great niece. I'm related to Jack Johnson through one of his sisters. Haywood still has vintage family photographs, documents, and just as importantly, an oral history, a testimony really, about the pain her great, great uncle carried with him to his grave. When he found out what was going to happen to him, that he was going to prison, that he came to his sister's house, Mama Janie, my great-grandmother, and he sat at her kitchen table and he cried, he cried like a baby. All of that pain stemmed from Johnson's success in the ring over white opponents and outside the ring for his decision to date and marry white women. Is it safe to say that your family considers this a stain not just on Jack Johnson's legacy but on your family's reputation? Absolutely. In 1913, the federal government went after Johnson with the Mann Act, named after the congressman who sponsored it. It was passed to crack down on interstate travel in the company of a prostitute, but federal prosecutors wielded it against Johnson for traveling with his white girlfriend. And when I read about how bold he was and defiant he was, and my mother told me how he wore these fancy clothes and he had fast cars, I said, well, look, I said, man, he's something else. The equivalent of what he was doing, we would call that swag. He had swag. And he was doing swag before it even became swag. Over the last few decades, the White House has indeed heard from several people in a position of power express their frustration. He was a victim of racism. And a desire to see Jack Johnson receive a presidential pardon. He was actually put in the U.S. penitentiary at Leavenworth because of his conviction. But so far, their efforts have been unsuccessful. Back in 1912, Jack Johnson bought more than two dozen plots here at Graceland Cemetery for himself and his family. And you could easily be deceived into thinking that the entire Johnson clan is buried here because none of his living descendants have played a major role in previous books, documentaries, or congressional efforts to get the pardon. In fact, legendary filmmaker Ken Burns' production team which released the 2005 documentary Unforgivable Blackness, The Rise and Fall of Jack Johnson, apparently did not even realize that Johnson still has relatives who care about this case. One of Burns' producers even sent Miss Haywood a letter apologizing for not consulting her in the making of the film. Quote, secondly, I must deeply apologize as a producer for not having worked harder to locate relatives of Jack Johnson. We knew you must exist, but none of our historical consultants or writers knew where or how to contact you. No one has ever consulted us or me about anything. So now, for the first time ever, the Johnson family is now personally involved in the presidential pardon process. I didn't even know that I could file a petition. And Ms. Haywood is working with Harvard Law School professor Ron Sullivan, a recognized expert in the field, to get a petition drafted and before President Obama, before he leaves office next month. James Ford traveled to Harvard earlier this week to speak with Professor Sullivan, who believes the family's involvement could make the difference. Very direct, personal appeal, saying, Mr. President, I'm a family member of, of Jack Johnson, here are the ways in which my family was impacted. Are there hurdles on the path to pardoning Jack Johnson? In a word, yes. Besides the fact that Johnson's case is more than 100 years old, former Attorney General Eric Holder, speaking with Mario Diaz, touched on what has been previously characterized as a trouble spot in this case. It's a report written by a federal agent in the 1930s, some 20 years after Johnson's conviction, that mentions anecdotal reports of Johnson's alleged abuse of women. Jack Johnson, no question, was um, 
convicted unfairly, but I'm also the father of two girls and uh, married to a wonderful woman. And to know the way in which he treated uh, women, physically abused women, gives me pause about whether or not he's a person deserving of uh, the ultimate um, presidential act. Acting Brooklyn District Attorney Eric Gonzalez now heads the conviction review unit created by his predecessor, Ken Thompson. With Professor Sullivan's help, D.A. Gonzalez says he questions the legitimacy of that federal report, especially given the period in which it was written, adding Johnson was never arrested or even charged with domestic abuse. I read that report. Um, I think it was clearly biased. I, th I believe it was there to kind of support the injustice that was to, to validate the injustice that was done. But most importantly, D.A. Gonzalez says none of that has anything to do with Johnson's conviction for simply traveling across state lines with his white girlfriend. There is nothing um, that in the Mann Act that caused uh, Jack Johnson to be prosecuted other than animus. They didn't want interracial relationships between people. PIX11's commitment to this investigation continues to be driven by what is widely perceived to be a racially motivated, antiquated decision to go after Jack Johnson. Each of us, Mario, James, and this reporter, all married a woman outside of our own race. And each of us entered into interracial marriages in the 21st century with pride and love for who we married and without fear of persecution from the federal government. Can you see that? Back in Chicago, Ms. Haywood says she considers that federal agent's negative report about her great-great-uncle a piece of fiction. Her family's desire to clear Jack Johnson's name could not be more real. People have said, what difference does it make? He's dead. He's been dead for 70 years. I'll tell you, it makes a difference because that's my family member. That's my great-great-uncle, my maternal great-great-uncle, and it matters to us because we are his family, and no family wants to have shame placed upon them for something that they did not do. J. Dow, Pix11 News.